My grace and peace be yours from God our Father through our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horb Lutheran Church, and each day Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to dwelling with you in the Word uh, as we struggle together as God's people to live out our faith in this world, but also to know that God is with us. Today's a special day because it's part of our midweek observance during Lent, and it's March the 3rd, it's a Wednesday, um, and we are going to look at Matthew 5, chapter 4. We're using our devotional booklet um, that we've been using throughout the season of Lent, and this particular day is going to focus on Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. So let us hear this verse. And I'm going to read it from two different passages. One is from uh, our newly revised standard version from the Lutheran Bible. And this is what it says. Using my Faith 5 bookmark. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I also find that sometimes as we dwell in God's Word, it's, it's uh, helpful to read from another Perspective, And so I'd also like to read from the Message Bible. Because in this version we hear, You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. A little bit of a difference there. So blessings as we dwell on this. So what jumps out at you as you think about this verse today? What questions might it raise? And what nudge might you feel as a child of God, as a person who um, goes into this world as a human being, but also uh, who does experience mourning and anger and difficulty, but also as a child of God whose spirit lives in you so that you might not um, know that you're alone or think that you're alone, that God's presence and love and grace is with you during this time. One of the things I'm mourning today is just the fact that we cannot be together in this beautiful sanctuary to worship God. Um, and so I thought about this passage today. You know, um, I see many wounded people in the world that live through their pain and sorrow each day, um, but they're also able to experience joy and peace, even though they know sadness. In fact, I had a, a family today that I was talking with um, who has lost recently a loved one and just talked about how all the range of emotions that we feel. And even though we know that God is with us and we know that there's good, there's still mourning and loss. And yet there is a comfort that comes to us from knowing we are part of God's bigger picture. And there's more for us than meets our eyes because we now see with faith and God provides a better way for us all. Um, what I appreciate about this verse today is that it's part of the Beatitudes. These are the teachings of Jesus on the side of the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount, they're called sometimes. And especially this verse is this genuine connection that Jesus is making with people. You know, we do experience sorrow. And, and though our world often tells us, you know, not to cry or keep a stiff upper lip and be strong or, hey, keep it together, um, we can't unfeel the feelings that we have. And Jesus says, it's okay. Be honest with yourself. Don't hide. And God is with you. God made you that way. But there's more to it than just that one feeling you're experiencing. There's joy as well. And while you are bearing your soul, know that it's safe with God. God can be trusted. And God is like a, a balm that can heal that sin-sick soul, but also can heal the difficulties we experience. God has endured grief and sorrow and loss, and God mourns with you. And this sorrow that we have, um, you know, sorrow is deep. It begins in our heart, but somehow it goes throughout our whole being, and it comes out of our in our emotions and on our sleeves, and we we wear it. So it it's um, it's in all of us. It's pervasive. When we, when we grieve or when we mourn. So Jesus tells us that we are blessed as we go through the pain because in God's kingdom we are accompanied by the one who understands and who comes to heal and who comes to bring joy to us. We um, and our mourning become the objects of God's loving activity. God pours out immeasurable comfort and consolation on those who mourn and who dare to walk through their pain. You know, remember David in Psalm 23 where he said, even though 
I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. And so today as we, we observe this passage and as we think about midweek in our Lenten journey, we also highlight Faith 5, which Pastor Joanna, Greg, and I are going to do each week. Um, today's Faith 5 is about reading God's Word. Um, yes, last week we talked about share. Today we're going to talk about reading God's Word. You know, it's through God's Word that we understand the story of a creator, of a redeemer, of a sanctifier coming into the world to bring light and life, to bring truth and grace, to bring compassion and care. And when you share like uh, a higher low with someone who, and read God's word together, God becomes a part of, of your joy and your mourning because God provides something through this time of connection, through the relationship that you have, and through the sharing of your experiences. Um, sometimes when, I, when you do this, as we think about reading God's Word, think about the verses that just come to your mind from memory. You don't have to you know, look up a Bible, but think of the verses that you know from heart and listen for God. Verses like, God is a very present help in times of trouble. Or um, I love when we read some of the I Am passages, you know, I am the bread of life, or I am the good shepherd. Or when we hear Jesus say, peace be with you. Or John three sixteen, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Or today, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. As we read God's word, we know God. And we learn God's love and strength for us. And we learn the way of faith, that it is a gift to us. We know that God saw the needs of the world, the mourning of creation, uh, and God responds by choosing to dwell among us. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit, God chooses to dwell within us, bringing us life and relationship and comforting sustenance and a sense of direction as we follow the Spirit's lead. Um, I read a story this week, uh, it was about in one of Bar uh, her sermons, Barbara Brown Taylor, she uses the uh, image of a Ferris wheel to portray Jesus' message of the Beatitudes. It's as though uh, everyone in the world were riding on the great Ferris wheel, she says. The wheel is stopped now, and think about it, if you've ever been on one where it's stopped uh, and you wonder where you are on it. At the top of it, um, where the air is exhilarating, the view is broad, sit the wealthy, the powerful, those whom the world considers blessed, and down at the bottom of the wheel sit the poor people that Jesus especially loves. And look, right now, those are like those are on top are going to stay on top. But sooner or later, God is going to release the brake. And that great wheel is going to lurch into motion. And when it finally stops, the rich and powerful are going to be on the bottom. And the poor will be on top. That's what the Beatitudes are really about, she says. Yes, they do deliver a comforting message of peace and consolation to the have-nots, but they also present a provocative challenge to those of us who have, among whom a great many of us are numbered, that we are called to share, we're called to love, we're called to be humble and have compassion. So, you know, we miss this gathering each Wednesday in Lent, and um, as we usually do, we gather for a meal, we have fellowship, we worship around the singing and preaching and reading of God's Word, but not being together physically doesn't stop God from being with us as we gather. So take time this week and every day to read God's word. And as we say during the season of Lent, return to the Lord your God. Um, we're reminded that that's where life is. It's our source of life. You know, this Bible, this word that we have is the greatest news on the planet. It's about the love of a creative, redeeming, and sanctifying God and how it's given freely to us. And so blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Uh, this past week we were studying the small catechism, and, and as uh, Luther talked about the, the uh, Holy Spirit, the third article, um, he says, what does this mean, the Spirit of God that we believe in? And this is what Luther said. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, 
and made me holy and kept me in the true faith, just as it calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sin, mine and those of all believers. And on the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. He talked about how we believe because the Spirit of God is in us. So even as we mourn, even if we experience joy, that's the Spirit of God that continues to flow through us and blesses us and makes us holy. I want to conclude with a hymn that uh, Luther put together, A Mighty Fortress based on Psalm 46. God is a very present help in times of trouble. It's the last stanza that we often sing, and it goes like this. God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. So blessings on this uh, midweek time as you read God's word and know that you are the object of God's love. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the day, for the gift of your life in Jesus, and for the life you give to us through your word and through your spirit. So bless us today and every day. Amen. Grace and peace.